All right, Puma Nation. Hey, uh, someone had asked about uh, my AR-10, uh, you know, patrol belt setup, right? So two configurations, right now you're seeing it here. So um, basically, you see there is a pistol that goes there. And um, that pistol is a Steyr. It's their long one because this is identical to what they give their military, okay? Um, so that's why I carry that in there. You saw that uh, YouTube, it was empty. It's not magazine. So, in this configuration, I carry the uh, pistol because let's just say in a green or yellow zone, I'd have the pistol on there. In a red zone, I'd have more of these guys over here because uh, I would choose to have more rifle ammo and rifle mags on me than a pistol. Um, so you're asking why do I have this? Okay, this is not a plate carrier. For those that are new, this is not a plate carrier. This here is called an over vest. You can use it like an assault vest. It's also made to go over body armor, maybe soft armor or something like that. It's made to zip up the front and get on quickly. This has its purposes. So as you can see right here, if I needed to run a VZ-58, that's what those mags are for, then I would throw that on quickly and I'd have at least a knife, a radio pouch, and that's it. I took some stuff off here because I'm changing it. I'm probably gonna add more mag pouches like these. Okay, um, so uh, the knife, yes, that's an original, you know, old school 70s, 80s uh, cold steel Tonto. So it came with a stupid leather case uh, that at the time is probably good, but today sucks. So I made my own uh, Kydex scabbard for it. And I've just 550 corded it on to where I want it to be. And it's out of my way. So, uh, would I have two knives like that? No, I wouldn't. Um, if it happened that way, it happened that way. So this is the very back of my belt. I have the knife in the center of the back of my belt. Uh, compass. If you're gonna patrol, you're gonna need a compass. Obviously, I'd have some ranger beads or something set up. Besides that, over here, I just have one tourniquet and a little pouch. You got a little throw bag. Probably throw some uh, water tablet, you know, pills in here. Uh, maybe some Band-Aids, a Leatherman or something in that pouch. Over here you can put something else, but remember, whatever in these will fall out, possibly. Uh, no, this is not an actual Cobra buckle. It's a knockoff, but it's one of the first ones that was done really well. And I don't believe you can buy these anymore uh, because of that. So I'm running just a, what is that, the, the gray crappy camouflage canteen holder. It's surplus, it was cheap, and the canteen was cheap. I think I got the whole thing in a flea market for like, I don't know, 15 bucks. So you can't beat that. Yeah, I'm a little shaky because I got done working out, so excuse my uh, shakiness and heavy breathing. Uh, over here, you can put some stuff in here. I think what I have in here is some rubber bands ranger bands so if i need to tie stuff down i can over here i can't remember what i got in here probably more yeah see these are ranger bands you can buy these they come in a packet now they're all cool guy stuff so you need some of my socks or something um so again you can put uh things in here water tabs i'd go with water tabs if you need to do that if you're worried about your water situation your area i would uh do that, okay? Um, so, let's look at what is this, right? What does it look like? Back out. Yeah, that's suspenders. I'm old school paratrooper. So, 308 rounds for AR-10 magazines, they get heavy. If you throw 30 rounders in there, which you can, um, they're gonna get real heavy. You notice there's only four mags there, right? Now, if I got a plate carrier, 
and I got three or four mags on the plate carrier, one on my gun. I got a lot of weight and ammo. At 150 grains per round, each one holding 20 and 30. That's a lot of ammo. It gets hefty. And if you've never worn it, you know, if you have the opportunity, give it a shot. You'll see exactly what I mean. Um, for years, I'd messed with the FAL. I had lots of mags. I've carried all over the place. I've fired them in competitions. I've built them. I've done everything with the FAL. A 308 round is an awesome round. As far as utility, I just don't think they're going to come out with a round that's going to replace it. So I'm sticking with 308. So I have a 308 rig. You can see how it's set up. And uh, yeah, because I'm not monetized. I'd love to put easy access links to things in the videos, but uh, for some reason, uh, YouTube's not letting me do that. So I have to put pictures at the end. I'm sorry for that. Uh, so you just have to, you know, uh, write it down and then look it up. So I'll try to put where I found this. A lot of the guys you've seen, here's the, here's the knockoff uh, Scorpion for the pistol. Mag, you know, the G-code. I always use G-code so I can swap things out quickly. Again, surplus, just like an old Vietnam era. Uh, this is my original compass that I had when I was in the military, so you can tell it's age. Uh, this I bought. It was a good deal. I can't find it anymore. I think I bought it on Midway. You know, cheapy, uh, $8 to $11 pouch here. Uh, the mags are all uh, SR25 mags, um, except for that black one is, uh, uh, came with one of my rifles. I think it's Smith & Wesson. Um, yeah, just a tourniquet pouch. I've got it set up, ready to roll, all instructions in case someone else has got to use it on me and they don't know what they're doing. So I try to leave the instructions in there. Um, so anyway, that's that setup. Now I'll switch over to the 5.56. Okay, 5.56. Same kind of getup. Um, so here, uh, Blackhawk, just a Blackhawk padded. You know, standard belt. These are knockoffs, but man, they, they fit these mags so tight. I'm not worried about them falling out. I got a little drop bag here, cheapy, like I've shown in other videos on the back of my plate carrier sometimes. Another, uh, you know, surplus a pouch there. I don't think I have anything on there. Ah, got an old bandage that's in there great. Old school style. You know, Vietnam era crap, because it's most of what we had in the 80s and 90s. All right, so this knife, a little big, a little goofy. May not stay there, but however, I chose this knife because of the fact that if I wanted, if I had to scrap up close with people, I wanted to go with more of a trench warfare kind of feel where you're less than an arm's length away from your opponent. Can you wield this device, right? And I wanted something that if I'm in close like that, I'm not gonna be ripping my hands open on teeth and shit. If you've ever thought, you know what I'm talking about. This provides some protection from my knuckles, Axe's brass knuckles. I can smash in a helmet if I had to. Uh, I can smash in all kinds of shit with it. I can spike someone in the face or the skull with that. I'm not saying go out in the world and try this on anyone. That's not giving you any go ahead on being violent to any humans. This is only strictly for your defense and the defense of your family. So yeah, I'm gonna go all medieval with that motherfucker. I'll just tell you right now. Uh, so the blade is a Tonto style. You could, I'll show you a picture of it online. You'll be able to see it. I just threw this pistol revolver holster, even though I'm not done making it. I just threw it on there because I got a G-code back there just to show. This I might carry a revolver, but more than likely I'm going to opt again. More mags. If it's red zone, more mags, not a pistol. More than likely I'm going to go with, unless I got plenty of mags around on a plate carrier or in my vehicle or something like that. A very basic medic pouch here to end the day. So I can peel open. It's got some bandages, scissors. Uh, there is a tourniquet right here on the side. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Plastic buckles, I'm not a big fan of it, but Black Hawk Link is good here. So we'll just leave it. Again, here's the uh, 
I didn't show you this before, but this is the old school way of paracording your suspenders into your belt. Um, I didn't do it here in the back because I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep those on there or keep that. I might want to change to a different color. But the only thing I could find on Amazon was black at the time. So I just ran with black. So what you do on these is you cut this plastic shit out. You run your 550 cord through this and down through your belt and back up and you get yourself a nice solid loop like that. See the plastics cut out on each one. So for all you new guys, didn't get the experience of 550 cord and how to utilize it. It's used for a lot of stuff. So there you have it. This would be kind of my basic patrol and it would change as I go more than likely or change as my environment changes or it might change based on the people around me. Um, and it may change because the belt breaks or I don't know. I lose weight, get skinnier or get fatter. You never know. All right, another consideration for uh, a patrol belt, saddle belt, whatever you want to call it. This is what I consider my security type setup. So it's kind of black, like, like you'd see police or security people wearing. Um, I have a, you know, an aid bag, just a water bottle pouch. That's a uh, shotgun pouch, or like you see in the, the shotguns I have. Uh, a couple of spare, you know, AR-15 mags, a uh, dump pouch, a um, G-code drop down, you know, holster kind of thing. You notice that mag's a little different. <clears throat> and then that's like a handcuff pouch. So, and then a, uh, just a knife. It's a uh, Smith & Wesson thing. It's not really expensive. Uh, I'll post a picture of it. It's not a bad knife. I mean, for what it is, I don't think it's full tang. So, you know, it's not like a real combat kind of knife, but it gives you something. Um, so the consideration here, this is almost Tacticon. Um, you know, it's a Tacticon belt, the ones like I like. And um, so earlier when I was talking about the other consideration on the belts is that the, um, you know, none of my stuff is set up like a Navy SEAL guy because uh, Navy SEAL guys and their equipment and what they get and what they're running with their crew, they're going to have different stuff, and, you know, obviously more high speed stuff than what I have. Uh, just for you new guys that don't understand, you know, a lot of special ops teams, um, they get stuff given to them by the big companies. It's expensive. And so it's stuff that they generally get to keep. They try out, they give, you know, tell these companies, hey, what I think about it. And the companies make modifications for it. And then later that stuff comes to you in the civilian world. At least that's the way it used to be. I don't know if it's still like that, but... Um, yeah, they would always have the cool high-speed gear, <clears throat> you know, from the manufacturers directly. So, yeah, you know, if they show a belt loadout, they're going to have all the cool guy stuff. Well, I don't have the kind of backing from, you know, uh, industry or United States government taxpayer or any of that. This is just me putting together what I can with what I've got and the budget I've got and trying to set up my tools for, for different events and different things. So, um, yeah, if you want to compare my, my spread, my, my belt setups to, you know, the, the tier one guys that go right ahead, it's probably not going to compare at all, but it'll get the job done for what I need. I know it will, because I've actually, you know, done patrolling, jumped to airplanes, done that kind of stuff. So I'm not completely, uh, I'm not coming at this as a noob. Or someone that doesn't understand what I'm talking about. Or hasn't walked the miles in gear to know what wears your ass out. Uh, I have. Plenty of times. So, my belts, I like to keep them pretty simple. Because that's all I need for now. If I need to add something to it, I want to have room to add. Or if I want to take something off, I can ditch it because it's not important. So, those are things you got to consider. And basically, situation your environment is going to dictate that. So anyway, this is more of a security setup, um, what I consider a security setup. And uh, so, yeah, like I got some cuffs on there. I don't have any major medical. I do, I believe there's a tourniquet in there, so a real basic kit. 
And um, another thing you might want to throw in there is some needle stick gloves. These gloves supposedly will keep your fingers from being stuck by needles if you had to, you know, uh, check someone's pockets and maybe a junkie or something like that. So if you're a security guy, you might want to look into something like that. The other thing too is, this is like an ink harness for this. So if I was doing like guard duty and standing around a lot, you know, you might want to look at attaching something like this onto this belt. Okay. Um, so I have all this stuff in a backpack, uh, you know, ready to roll if I needed to use it. Uh, the other thing too is on this setup, I'm using 5.7. So this is a PSA, uh, I can't remember what the hell they call it. It's a PSA, came with a hull sun, it's got a threaded barrel, it's 5.7, yeah. Um, so it's empty, no mag, anything like that. So it just would go <clears throat> right in here. You know, into the uh, my normal setup of action. Uh, right in there. So there you have the five seven setup. And um, yeah, I just got one extra mag, one in there, so I just got two mags. That's it. Uh, do I need to go any more than that? I don't think I do on this setup. I'm gonna have some kind of rifle, you know. Probably AR-15, truck gun, something like that. Something, something I purposely have set up for this. I do have other 5.7 uh, equipment. So this can go hand in hand with that other equipment. And um, yeah, I think that kind of concludes it. I mean, <clears throat> like I just said, uh, my setups are pretty basic. This is that same kind of rollout. Um, same thing I have on my plate carrier, right? So it's just extra shotgun rounds. I guess I could put you can tactical gear. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I do have another mag, sorry. Anyway, that mag, it would go in there. Um, yeah, so if you're not familiar with 5.7, this is what it looks like. It has ballistics similar to like a 9mm, but you get a little more range, out to 200 yards. Um, I guess effectively, if that's what you're using. Um, anyway, that's it. It's went a lot longer than I expected. Anyway, uh, there we go. Like, subscribe. Have a great day.